pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Go ahead and consider a motion to approve the agenda. I'll second. second it. I have a motion by Schmidt and a second by Aarons. Sean, will you call the roll? Commissioner Aarons? Yes. Commissioner Gibbon? Yes. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner Landine? Yes. Move on to our consent agenda and consider a motion. Uh, Madam Chair? Yes. Could I go back to uh, number under reports number E? Uh, can we get an explanation on that one for this um, pipeline thing? What that is? What is that? Who are you asking? What is that, Bill? Which one? A, B, C? E, D? E, 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 as in easy. What is that? Um, the auditor received a copy of the application for the carbon pipeline that's going through yep. the county. Um, so it is the complete application and all of the uh, company information and maps so the county is on notice of where the pipeline is going and what's taking place in case the county has a position on it. Well, it certainly stirred up a lot of people because people are calling already about where we are and how many hearings we're going to have and McPherson County, you know, had, a, had some action of eliminating all that. So this is just a copy of the application? All right. Yes. That's all? Just notice. Okay. Is that, I, I, I will confirm what Commissioner Schmidt has said since, since it came out on the agenda Friday. I've received emails and phone calls too in regard to this, and uh, I guess not very many have been positive at this stage. So I, I just wanted some clarification too. Yes, it's in the auditor's office. It's probably a good 10 inch binder with four or five maps that show the route, um, the application and all of the other accompanying material to support it so that we're just on notice. So does this mean that we are supporting it? It, it No, they're just, PUC is just supplying us with a copy of the application. There's no okay. implications one way or another. It is just <clears throat> available to the, to the county and the commission. And, and if I may, the notice that's attached on E is a notice of the hearings that the PUC is yes. going to hold. That's all that that document is. Is for PUC. It, there's no pending application or anything else before the commission. Will we put that on on our website or anything when they're holding those hearings, you know, or when they're holding those? I think there's one coming up in March 23rd. I March, believe it yeah, was at the Ramcota or something like that. Because this this will have this is going to be very controversial, and a lot of uh, a lot of people are are concerned about that. So I want to make sure that we're not endorsing anything or at this point in time we're just passing information along in other words this is and Sean, yeah, as Sean far as correct this is just strictly at PUC it's their notifications for everybody along the pipeline that's oh. the notice that will be on the website oh, and, okay. and so the PUC will be having public input meetings on Tuesday March 22nd at Sully Buttes High School starting at 530 on Wednesday March 23rd at 5.30 at the Washington Room at the Ramcota Conference Center in Sioux Falls, March 24th at noon at the DeSmet Event Center in DeSmet. Also on March 24th, the Redfield School Auditorium um, starting at 5.30, and that's in Redfield. And then also in the Northern Room at the Ramcota Hotel in Aberdeen on March 25th at noon. So those are when those hearings will, uh, will take place for public input. With that, can we move on to the consent agenda? Consider a motion. I'll so move, Madam Chair. Thank Second. You. Thank you. <coughs> Sean, will you call the roll? Commissioner Aarons? Yes. Commissioner Gibbon? Yes. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner Landine? Yes. Then we'll move on to our opportunity for public comment. If there's anyone in the audience who'd like to come up and uh, address the board, come up. State your name and address. All right, nobody oh, coming up today. Have somebody. Oh, 
All right. Sorry, I see other names there. I didn't want to take their spot. Um, so my name is Joy Hone, and I would like to talk to you about the Summit Carbon Solutions Pipeline that's proposed to go through Lincoln County. I am concerned about the safety of this very hazardous pipeline that could put our lives in danger. Because Summit Carbon Solutions has already changed the route several times, many citizens and landowners are unaware that this pipeline can be crossing their land and or going close to their homes. That's why I'm asking you commissioners to help protect the citizens and landowners of Lincoln County. Summit Carbon Solutions is coming in under the radar and trying to get their application approved before many have a chance to know what's going on. As a result, citizens and landowners do not have the opportunity to become informed. The clock is ticking since Summit has already filed their application and the 12 month permitting process has begun. If the PUC approves this pipeline, it could affect many citizens and landowners in Lincoln County. This pipeline is proposed to be within a mile of the populated city of Harrisburg. Consider how many lives would be put in danger if there was a leak. Your opinion and your voice matters. The PUC will listen to you. How can individual citizens and landowners take a stand against these big pipeline companies with deep pockets? As county commissioners, the PUC will listen to you over individual landowners and citizens. 20 counties in Iowa have already submitted their objections and we need your help. Your opinion and your voice matters. Are you knowledgeable about carbon dioxide pipelines and the dangers of a rupture? If not, please, please take some time and become educated about them. This pipeline is unnecessary. South Dakota has the largest ethanol producer, poet in Chancellor, they have the, uh, South Dakota has the largest ethanol producer in the nation, and they are not part of this project. Ethanol plants can reclaim carbon on site, eliminating any need for a hazardous pipeline that could put countless lives in danger. Summit Carbon Solutions is a for-profit pipeline company with private investors for private gain. It is not for the public good, which is what Summit wants us to think. Please join together and help protect us and our fellow citizens and landowners against this very hazardous and unnecessary pipeline. As Lincoln County Commissioners, your vote matters even more. Thank you for your time and consideration. And I have a couple of handouts to give to you. Thank you, John. Yeah, you can hand your handouts to Sean down here. I'll need six or seven would be better. Is yep. Joy, do you have a copy of this? No. Okay, you can have mine. Oh, well, thank you. That's a copy that was sent to uh, Commissioner Gibbons and I okay. met with their proponent. Okay. And they were handed out, so that's got their information, so you okay. can use it, okay? Thank you. You bet. I appreciate that. Thank you. Anybody else want to come up and address the board? If not, we'll move on to our commissioner reports. Any commissioners have a report they'd like to make today? Madam Chair, if I could. Sure. Last week, it was my pleasure to be in Washington, D.C., representing South Dakota on the board of directors for the National Association of Counties. And I'll try and be brief, but at that meeting, um, I would encourage any commissioner to take the time and attend that. For a long time, we budgeted uh, in our budget the ability for a commissioner to attend the uh, convention. I think Commissioner Gillespie took care, uh, took two of those particular uh, opportunities and went uh, to Las Vegas for one and I forget the yeah, second one. But at there, we had the overview of the U.S. Treasury's final approval for ARPA funds, which I brought back, which covers everything that a county can do, where it can spend its money, how it gets done, about the audits and everything. I brought that back for our auditor, so she has that. I brought back the county landscape to put this in. And what the county landscape is, is you as private citizens have an ability to go to the website. All you gotta do is go to NACO and you look up counties and you can find out all the details that, about a county. You can find out 
how much population there is, what the average age is, what the average income is, how many square miles. It is detail upon detail upon detail that you can find out about any county in the nation, especially Lincoln County if you so desire. Also, I brought back information on the bipartisan infrastructure bill and how that will impact counties as they try to work with their roads and bridges. And this is something that NACO has been lobbying Congress on for a long time, and it's being held up for any number of legislative reasons. But there's a lot of information on how it will help impact our particular thing. I brought back something for our veteran service officer, which talks about resources that are available that have newly been enacted because of Congress. And some of these are minor, and some of these are, will maybe affect our own veterans. So these are the kinds of information that we have available. I'll put another plug in for something. There is a high leadership grant, and I think several of you probably have participated in this. And this was uh, a process by which counties help their own uh, individuals help become better employees and better leaders. And one of the things that I have been impressed with <clears throat> is that we have had General Colin Powell is the one uh, that helped make this leadership uh, program uh, go, and, and he has his stamp all over it. And with that, they get a very interesting book written by that, that general who's got a lot to offer. Anyway. Madam Chair, that's just a brief summary of what we did in uh, NACO. And the last thing I want to talk is this. I received a couple of emails from individuals that were very upset with me that I was spending Lincoln County taxpayer dollars on all my trips. They were um, all stemmed up about that. So I wanted to ask our auditor, how much money uh, have I ever charged Lincoln County for any of this travel, Sherry? charge Lincoln County? Never. A dime. Never and I'll tell you, this is not because it makes me a, b a better person. I just believe you have a commitment to the organization. What does happen for clarification? When we go to a national convention, our state association of counties pays for my registration. And that is usually about 300 and some dollars. And they play for, pay for my lodging. Any other expenses like travel, air travel, meals, and any other things, that's on my dime. And I'm not saying that makes me great, but I want the public to know that I haven't spent one dollar of Lincoln County taxpayer money to do any of this. And I do believe that NACO and its participation has done a lot for our county. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Commissioner. Any other commissioners have reports today? If not, we'll move on to regular business. First item on our agenda is a second reading in public hearing. This is, this, <clears throat> excuse me. This is a second reading in public hearing for an ordinance of Lincoln County, South Dakota, amending the 2009 revised zoning ordinance for Lincoln County by rezoning property legally described as Track 1, Vogue's Edition, and Lot B, Track 1, Vogue's Edition, Northeast Quarter, Section 9, Township 98 North, Right 50 West, Lincoln County, South Dakota, from the RR Rural Residential District to the C Commercial District and amending the official zoning map of Lincoln County. Location is parcel ID 0985009D100. Uh, good morning, Toby Brown with Lincoln County Planning. Uh, the applicant for this item is Julie Palmer. The owner is Keith Palmer, who is Julie's father. Uh, location is approximately 1,850 feet east of the city of Worthing. Uh, parcel size is 10.52 acres. Um, as you can see, the property is currently zoned uh, RR Rural Residential. There is development just to the east of this property um, that was part of the Rural Residential rezoning. Uh, primarily, it's uh, single family dwellings to the east of this parcel. Um, purpose of this application, there was no concept plan included with the application. However, in discussions with the applicant, uh, the applicant landowner intend to sell the property for commercial type development. Um, in 1996, this property was petitioned and rezoned to rural residential. Uh, staff findings and the Planning Commission findings was that this application is not consistent with the comprehensive plan. Uh, with that, we have to answer any questions that you have for staff at this time. So, Toby, all of those um, properties there to the west, those are all rural residential? Correct.
Does anybody have any questions for staff? If not, is the applicant here? Yes. Hi, would you just state your name and address, please? And Julie Palmer, 3211 West Bitterroot Street, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. I'm Keith Palmer's daughter. Um, I'm his conservator and guardian. Um, we'd like to rezone to commercial. We've had a lot of interest of people wanting to do an event barn or a small business um, in that location by the highway. And um, the Worthing Planning and Zoning um, also had in future plans to have that be commercial. So they had planned on it someday down the road being a commercial development. So um, the only people that have been opposed to it are the two neighbors to the west. Do you have any questions for me? Anybody have any questions? What is their objection? They don't want they don't want a small business by their family site, but the I mean it's one acre lot. It wouldn't be right <coughs> by their house. So I don't know. I, I mean, we've had people wanting to do storage units or a small event barn. The small event barn would be closer to the gravel road, so it would be, you know, a ways away from their home. Toby, is that, is that within the City of Worthing's growth plan to be commercial? Uh, yes, the City of Worthing's comprehensive plan identifies as a nodal commercial office area. However, the city of Worthing cannot provide infrastructure to that site currently. Did they have a plan for when they would be able to do that? Uh, not that I'm aware of, no. Okay. They said it was fine either way if I did four large residential lots or commercial, they would be okay with septic. So when you say they can't provide uh, infrastructure, Toby, you mean sewer and water? Correct. But isn't there water in the ditch? There is real water that would be available to the site, but not city water would be right. available to the right. site. Okay. Would the city of Worthing have to approve? We would take the first step whether to zone or whether to rezone this, and then ultimate approval over what gets constructed there would be up to the city, correct? Uh, correct. The subdivision authority is the city of Worthing, so they would approve any lot splits, <clears throat> lot sizes, development, and site improvements. So, just for the public's edification, if we rezoned that, what would be the permitted? uses in that rezone area. I mean, would they wouldn't necessarily have to come to us to get a conditional use for a like an event barn, would they? Correct. So retail type uses would not require it, if any type of conditional use permit, but there's a laundry list of conditional use permits that would be required. Sure. So I mean, it could be anything from a dispensary to yeah. Correct. Okay. I've been by this property, and I know that it's a, it, it's extremely low. I mean, when you look at the elevation of the the round the areas surrounding it, um, I know this was an area in 2019 that held water for a period of time as well. So, um, it, it surprises me that septic systems would be acceptable in this particular area if it was developed. You could do a mound septic system, which is above ground. I mean, isn't it all in the floodplain for the most part? Um, I don't believe so, but I could go up there and put that on. It's but. not in the floodplain. Which layer would that on the... Would be, that be the flood risk <laughs> map? Or? Correct. It's, it's not showing as firm on the map. 
do the neighbors use septic systems? Yes. And they've had no problems, I assume. Does anybody else have any questions for the applicant? So, one more time. Okay. So you're asking that to be rezoned commercial, mm -hmm. as opposed to, or even light industrial. Um, I I tried to sell it rural residential, and the majority of the interest was for, you know, storage units, houses with a bi business, small business, or event barn. You know, so and. Jason Schroeder with Worthing Planning and Zoning said they would welcome some business and growth in the town. They don't have the funds to provide the infrastructure in the foreseeable future. So, you know, commercial is taxed better than real estate, you know. Exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> and, you know, they're buffering things that if your neighbors were concerned that you could always do to uh, landscape this thing. We've always asked for whether it's a, uh, you know, trees to buffer the visibility or you put some kind of right. bones around it or something like exactly. that. I mean, there's a railroad track behind, so it makes sense, you know, it might be a business that would use that. There's highway on the other side. So it seems well, to it me... Be the most ideal if you had residential there, if the train traffic could get much more, uh, uh, you know, frequent on hauling of grain and things like that from the ethanol plant and places like that. Bobby, when was that rezoned to rural residential? Uh, 1996, with the intention of building residential single-family dwellings. Have you owned it? Has your family or your father owned it since 1996? Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, I think he he bought it after it was zoned, so I'm not sure the exact date. My dad has dementia, so I'm taking care of. He initially had the neighbors to the west. He had that land too and sold it to them. Anybody else have so, any questions? Okay, a question. So the land sits there. It's rural residential. So that's all you can do is sell it for houses right now. Well, I can't do one acre lots because they would require a million dollar infrastructure. They would require me to put in sewer. And so, <clears throat> but then we also need septic because the city because of Worthing. Is that in Worthing's growth area or something? They, well, they can't afford to put in to no, offer I mean. the amenity of okay. sewer, but they would require me. Their city engineer told me it would cost a million dollars for me to put in water and sewer if I did one acre lots, which is the minimum requirement. Well, that's not financially feasible. I mean, I would never get a return. No. So they did approve if I did four larger lots and kept it rural residential and we would just do septic. And they also approved a shouse which is a shop house, but the interest we've had is either, you know, event barn storage unit, and they seem to really like the idea of an event barn. So um, I've, I've been going to meetings for a year now <laughs> on, on this and trying to figure out what we can and can't do. And Jason Schroeder said they would really like to see some kind of business come to Worthing, you know, like you said, it brings tax revenue for them. and. All the other towns around Sioux Falls are growing, but Worthing is kind of stagnant, so. That's outside of their city limits, correct? But it's in their jurisdiction. Yep. Well, event barn certainly is, I don't know, barn's a barn. 
we, we can hear all kinds of things that uh, if you put an event barn, you got increased traffic and all kinds of things. But, you know, not always, uh, not all the time is there traffic so I when you I have an event. I think and it would concern, just be maybe one or two days a week or something. I think the concern is that this is just a rezone and that there are so many things that you could just put up there that I could see why there would be some resistance from the neighbors because um, they wouldn't have any control over any of those things listed under. Well, know. my understanding is they would have to go to the commission planning and ask for approval for whatever business. Is that correct, Toby? That's not correct. Oh, it's not? Okay. It would depend on the type of business. Okay. So I thought they had to present a plan or something before they went forward. No, and I think, I mean, if I'm hearing what Toby said is correct, that there wasn't a concept plan, so you don't really know what you Because want. I don't know what I can and can't do, so how can I plan? Sure. Every time I make a plan, they nix it. I'm spending money on surveyors <laughs> back and forth because, you know, a million dollar infrastructure. You know, we had eight one acre lots planned out, and then they told me I had to put in a million dollars worth of infrastructure and that they would not offer that amenity to us. So does that make sense to buy something you can't use? And, you know, and so then I changed it. Well, and, and, and then they, you know, more people said, you know, you might want to do commercial. And the town of Worthing is amiable to it. The only people opposed are the neighbors to the west. Well, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, but a lot of times the person that's buying the property will come in with the owner and they'll be making and they'll have a set use that they want to, you know, whatever they actually are going to do with the property, and then the sale is usually conditioned on that. Um, that might be a better route for you to go. Well, my plan was to sell it as a chunk, you know, and let someone else decide how they want to use it. And then if not, I would do um, a road. Right now plans are being made. If Whether it's residential or commercial, a road from the gravel road to access it and it would be a cul-de-sac with four larger lots because the city of worthing said they would approve that if it were residential or commercial i know and i understand what you're saying i'm saying the problem i think is the great unknown that right. you don't right. really know what you're going to do with the property right. i know i've been dealing with the great unknown for a year <laughs> <laughs> i get it i keep coming to meetings and you know i get it um so either way I have a plan either way now, you know, so. <clears throat> sure. Is there anyone that would like to come up and speak in favor of the application? How about anybody that would like to speak against it or in opposition? All right. Any discussion by the board? Madam Chair, I just want to reiterate maybe what was some of the discussion then at the planning and zoning. Um, does not meet our, our uh, staff, uh, our plan, um, and the opposition from the landowners. We've had similar rezones that were denied because of. Mike, will you use your microphone? I will when I. I know, but we got to be able to hear you for the recording. Thank you, Madam Auditor. Um, we have the opportunity at times to look into the future. The problem with this situation is just a rezone. We don't know what's going to be proposed there, um, unfortunately. And as the uh, chair indicated, that is a, a significant uh, issue for residents in that area. Uh, and again, I think the vote was, what was the vote on planning and zoning? Was it unanimous to deny? Uh, one to five, one uh, to five. failure. Yeah. Thank you, Toby. Any further discussion? Well, if I heard Madam Chair, the uh, planning and zoning from Toby saying that the application is not consistent with the county application plan, is that correct? With the comprehensive plan, correct. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I want to vote yes on it. I mean, I'm, I am pro-business. I think that probably is a good location for a business. That said, 
I think you need to partner with somebody who's really interested in the land and bring forward a concept plan um, for what actually you intend to do with that piece of property so that we're not playing a guessing game here. So, I would echo <clears throat> that. You know, I, I like the idea, and I think you got it there. But if you can partner with somebody so that the neighbors know definitely what could be there, I don't think you'd have a problem. I mean, don't bring the cockpit government down the road and you just spend more money and all that kind of stuff. But if you could, that would make it so much easier. Ma'am, if, yeah. if you want to speak, you need to come up to the microphone, please. I believe the neighbors would oppose it no matter what. Um, when mentioned that a shouse could be approved, they didn't even like the idea of someone doing mechanics in the shop with next to their house. So, and you know, I, I mean, if I do rural residential, and Worthing says I can allow a shouse and market it that way, and we can allow a Morton building. Chances are, people are going to be a mechanic or have construction or something. So your land and your at this time. point, I don't I don't care either way. I have a plan either way now, but the neighbors will oppose it no matter what because they said they didn't like the idea of even a mechanic, you know, being there. So I mean, Are they opposed to houses too. They said they're not, but okay. you know, with that, uh, I'd ask for a motion to approve. A house is a house with a shop, ma'am. Thank you. Yeah, I'd ask for a motion to approve. I'll make the motion to approve. Nope. Thank you. Is there a second? I'll second? Thank you. I've got a motion and a second to approve. Any further discussion? If not, Sean, we call the roll. Commissioner Aarons? Yes. Commissioner Gibbon? No. Commissioner Poppins? No. Commissioner Schmidt? No. Commissioner Landin? No. <clears throat> Sorry about that. I just got to go back to the drawing board, I think, and find somebody to buy the property. And with that, uh, we'll move on to our second reading in public hearing. This is a second reading in public hearing for an ordinance of Lincoln County, South Dakota, amending the 2009 revised zoning ordinance for Lincoln County by rezoning property legally described as Lot 2, Tract 3, Huizinga Farms, 2nd Edition, Southwest Quarter, Section 2, Township 99 North, Right 50 West, Lincoln County, South Dakota, from the A1 Agricultural District to the RR Rural Residential District and amending the official zoning map of Lincoln County. Location, parcel ID 099-5002-F302. Uh, good morning again. Uh, the applicant and owner for this petition is Mark and Teresa Blow. Uh, location is approximately 1,328 feet west of the city of Worthing. Uh, parcel size is about approximately 6.08 acres. Uh, concept plan was submitted with the application. Uh, the applicant, uh, the concept plan intends to show that there would be one uh, single family dwelling built on the property. Um, in uh, approximately 2001, uh, the property was platted. The parent parcel is approximately 11.3 acres in size. It was this entire area here. Uh, that property was assigned one building eligibility. Um, in 2014, the city of Harrisburg, who has subdivision authority over this property, uh, they approved a split, a parcel split of the property, which resulted in lot one, which is to the west, and lot two, which is to the east. Uh, the applicant owner subsequently then sold lot one, which was their primary. They had a house and an outbuilding on that property. Uh, they retained lot two, uh, which is the property that's currently being petitioned. Um, as, as the staff report analysis shows, uh, staff finding and the planning commission finding was is that this application is not consistent uh, with the comprehensive plan. Uh, there was a building eligibility associated with this by rezoning this property. It would be two things, it would be a spot zone to this property, but second, it would be circumventing uh, the building eligibility process, uh, which the county has had in place uh, since 1995. Again, Planning Commission, uh, their uh, approval, their, their affirmative approval failed by a vote of one to five. Uh, with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have for staff at this time. When did uh, Harrisburg um, approve the splitting of the parcel? Uh, 2014. And do you know why they did that? Uh, it was petitioned by the landowner. 
they they have the authority to approve parcel splits. Does a parcel split give a head nod, so to speak, to allowing another uh, allowing rezoning to happen to rural residential? I, you know, without really getting into the head of Harrisburg, I, I don't know the answer to that. I would hope not. Um, I would hope that we have better communication about, you know, when they do split these, what can be used for that property, what cannot be used for that property. So there is no building eligibility there right now? Correct. Correct. There's, Toby, there's nothing on either one of those lots, correct? The lot to the west is was their original parcel that has their house and yes. their outbuilding on, but they sold that. And yeah. Thank you. I do, Madam Chair. I do have some letters from uh, property owners surrounding the area uh, in opposition to this, but I can read those at the time. I don't believe any of them made it this morning. So, <clears throat> with that. Um, the so applicant is here and attached. Sure. So you don't, the reason for the original split, you have no idea why they did that? Uh, you could ask the applicant why they intended to do that, but no, there's, you know, there's nothing in the record that shows it. Harrisburg was aware that it did not have a building eligibility when they split it. <clears throat> Thank you. Does Thank anybody you. have any other questions for staff? If not, is the applicant here? Right there. Good morning, sir. We just state your name and address, please. Good morning, Mark Blow, 2600 South Kira Court, Sioux Falls, South Thank Dakota. You. Um, I've got a handout here. These are just some notes um, that I put together. A lot of it's the same as I did at the planning commission meeting, but uh, uh, the question all comes up is how does this piece of property exist? We bought the original 11 acres and uh, October of 2001 when the uh, Twin Towers were still smoking in New York uh, and the economy wasn't looking real great but we invested in the in, in this property uh, built a home uh, during the 2008 9 10 12 economic times um, uh, we were taking a look at the situation uh, uh, not knowing what the what the future held I had 11 acres as collateral on my mortgage uh, I thought that wasn't exactly the smartest thing to do. You never know uh, what could happen. You lose your job or what have you. Uh, and I didn't want everything, all of my assets tied up in the collateral of one house if something happened. So we elected to break that off. Uh, 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 perhaps apocalyptic thinking, who knows, but at least a guy's got five acres to pitch a tent on if a guy had to. Um, over the years, uh, so that process took two or three years. Uh, we had to work with Harrisburg. Um, they had a fairly archaic uh, uh, subdivision ordinance at that time. Multiple hearings uh, I, I, uh, I gave to them, uh, and they eventually uh, uh, allowed that, but uh, they also ended up having to change their subdivision ordinance, which was blatantly illegal at the time. Um, so that was a process. We started that in 2009 or 10. Uh, by the time they got around to approving the plat and it getting recorded, it was 2014. So um, over the last few years, um, uh, on this, this handout, and, and we got copies up there that you can see, uh, our taxes have over doubled on that property, um, um, even though, uh, whatever, it's, it's, it's went up. And uh, the values that you see on that chart are actually at uh, very um, substandard assessment levels. Uh, probably assessment was barely over 50% of eventual market value. So you can see what the level of those taxes are. Um, having twenty or thirty thousand dollars a year in property taxes doesn't fit into my retirement portfolio, portfolio very well. So uh, uh, there was other things going on. We had a significant mortgage. Uh, that's why we sold. Uh, Love to stay in the place, uh, but there was other risks associated with that infrastructure risk. We're on an arterial route. Uh, we watched what happened in in T when they annexed that route. Uh, and we're going to improve that road and, and bill it to the adjacent landowners uh, with a 900 foot frontage that would be that would be a retirement killer also so there was a lot of risks associated with that so that's what led us to sell uh, 
to sell that property and hopefully rebuild um, something that's more affordable but nice right beside it. Um, understand that spot zoning is not desirable, but it is not totally unprecedented in northern Lincoln County. Um, it happens. There are provisions in the comprehensive plan to make these, uh, these changes to the ordinance. Um, I'll save you the pain of going through examples. Uh, you guys have probably lived through them enough. I don't need to highlight that. But I think we do have special situation there uh, where we're located. We are very close to Harrisburg. Um, um, as, as Toby pointed out, um, uh, we are, we're by Harrisburg, not uh, Worthing, but uh, um, uh, this, this property here is currently has all the sewer it looks like put in uh, on this uh, 60 acres. Um, it has not officially been annexed yet. I don't know what the issue is there. If they're having certain platting issues, I do not know. Um, I would assume that's going to happen relatively quick. That is within 400 foot of our property. Right now, there's a plan to install infrastructure um, sewer directly on the north side of Nine Mile Creek. Uh, I visited with Harrisburg this morning. Uh, that is still uh, in, in, um, in, in the process. Um, it's my understanding. I was also told this morning that there's napkin development plans and annexation for this 75 acres. Uh, which is directly uh, in the south um, uh, east cor southwest quarter of that uh, that section there. So um, another point is I would like to annex, and and there will be city services there in the somewhat near future. Um, it's my understanding that they want to get this sewer line in next summer. So things are going to be happening there. It is on the north side of the creek. Uh, do not know there. I know when they were planning this uh, last year, I was approached uh, by the developers here. There was one time there was a plan to come up 274th Street and try to cut across the, the, the creek here somewhere. I do not know if they've even uh, determined the exact location of that yet at this time. So things are happening there. Um, uh, I would like to annex, but uh, as, I, as I mentioned a minute ago, uh, sometimes things in Harrisburg work at a glaciated play, pace, so um, uh, uh, we'll, we'll have to see what happens. Um, we have worked with all of the, uh, uh, the local agencies there. We've uh, worked with the township. Uh, they have given an approach permit for easement access off of that property. Uh, some of the points that are highlighted in your handout uh, uh, that uh, are address the comp plan. Uh, one is uh, one of the initiatives is to improve for orderly, efficient, and economical development. As I said, we're in the bullseye of Harrisburg development. Uh, although this may be a, a, a spot uh, a spot zone at the moment, uh, how long that lasts, I do not know. When I first started this, I was hoping that uh, uh, we could uh, get some kind of variance to the. <coughs> to the zoning permission, get some kind of a conditional use until such time we were annexed, but we were advised that this is the only, this is the only opportunity we had. Uh, we visited with the city of Harrisburg. Uh, I attended their planning zoning meeting in December, uh, made them all aware of what was going on. They were in 100%, uh, there was zero op opposition presented at the meeting. Uh, in fact, uh, one of the planning, uh, I went back and listened to the planning commission meeting uh, last night and, and uh, one of the planning commission folks uh, who's heavily involved with Harrisburg said that's exactly the intended use for that piece of property as it's got a geographic border uh, on the north side is the creek uh, and it's it's got the county road on the other side it's not amenable to, uh, to anything there's already 10 acreages along that road right now um, I would be interested to find out who uh, I was unaware there was opposition to the plan. Uh, we had uh, several people speak in favor of it at the Planning Commission meeting, my neighbors. I was unaware that there was opposition anywhere. Um, uh, 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 so uh, that's news to me. Uh, but we believe we've worked with, uh, uh, with the cities and the township to lay things out. Um, uh, it would preserve the, heart, the uh, consistency, continuity of, uh, of uh, residences along that route. Um, if it gets annexed, it could be um, it could be platted too. I've heard concerns that people say, "Well, when you rezone it, anything can go in there." 
I disagree with that a little bit. Yeah, based on zoning it might, but anything that went in there with multiple houses uh, would have to go through the Harrisburg platting process, which provides for public comment and input, and it's just not a shoe in that uh, people could go in. I know there were some neighbors that were concerned that I'd put in eight or 10 houses or something like that. Um, that's not gonna happen. Our intent is to put in one home and one shop, as I had uh, on the adjacent property. We plan to live there. Um, 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 I've, I've been raising sweet corn and alfalfa on that ground. Um, we got a sweet corn stand we run. It's kind of fun. Uh, uh, take a week's vacation and do that in the summer. Uh, we would like to continue to do that. Uh, I turned 62 this fall, uh, and it would be a nice uh, retirement thing to do, uh, expand it a little bit. Uh, and I think it helps maintain. One of the initiatives of the, of the um, uh, comprehensive plan was to preserve agriculture cultural um, uh, uh, environment in, in, the, in the county. Uh, we continue, we're, we're hoping to continue to do that by raising sweet corn and other commodities uh, for sale so it will remain in the agricultural world in large part. Uh, as far as Im imparting um, 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 uh, services, um, uh, Water's on site, Lincoln County, I gave them a uh, Lincoln County grow water, I gave them an easement, they connected, the water line is on that property. Uh, of course, electricity is there. Uh, wastewater right now, I happen to be a registered professional engineer and was licensed in, uh, 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 by the Depar uh, Department of Environment and Natural Resources to put in uh, sewer systems. Um, they are, they're a good system if they're done properly. Most of the ones that have problems, they're not installed properly. But uh, that, that may go soon, too. That might be in six months that'll be in that, that line. It might be 16 years. I don't know the, there's a, what, the, what, what the time that we can hook into that uh, would be. Mark, why don't we, I want to hear the opposition letters, since you obviously are not aware of them I either. And maybe we'll have some questions yeah. for you. Toby, can you come up and share those with us? Yes. Um, the first one, and, and these individuals, I've been in communication with some of them as weather related. Other ones, they just couldn't get a time off of work, but they did want me to read these letters. <clears throat> so this first one is from Rodney Hughes. He's a neighbor. Um, as a property owner on 274th Street, we are opposed to any rezoning that would allow for multiple single family houses to be built on said property. Uh, for Mark and Teresa Blow, this would include but not be limited to future owners of the same said property. If owners of said property would have the availability of additional housing eligibilities in the same property, we would be opposed to rezoning. If and only if the rezoning would be limited to one single family housing eligibility, would we be in favor? However, since rezoning would result in availability of multiple housing eligibilities on said property uh, for the current and future, possibly future owners of said property, we are not in favor of the rezoning. Uh, Mark has tried to sell this to all neighbors as a place he and Teresa are going to build their next home and shop. Uh, those of us that know Mark have spent any time with Mark know that Mike's, Mark's eye is on the prize. He has promoted his plans for a home and shop to Zomers, Jans, Hughes, the Nords, and to the new residents of his previous home. Meanwhile, Mark has previously expressed desires and aspirations to do more, way more. He has personally told me that he thinks the property could support a cul-de-sac and up to five homes. He has also tried to sell the property to Jans for $640,000, even told Brian Jans that he thinks the unimproved land in Lincoln County was worth $5 a square foot and his property should be worth almost $1.3 million. All the while, he has gone to the county and begged and pleaded to devalue the tax assessment of his property to keep his property taxes at the bare minimum on the parcel. I was told by both Jans and Nord at last night's meeting, Mark was expressed the plan for now was to build one house. After hearing that for now part, we are all aware that Mark's true intentions are. Mark sent us out a text message to all of us last night, thanking us for our support, informed us of the council's decision to deny the proposal. Mark then asked us to email our support to the planning and zoning office. All the while, he is stating that it's a home to shop for him and Teresa. Mark stated that he intending to appeal the decision. Based on the information below, <coughs> we are requesting uh, adamantly against the rezoning of the parcel. Uh, the next was from Dale Zomer. Uh, he's a neighbor to the north. I just want to clarify one thing in supporting Mark Blow's project of the replatting of his house of his five or six acres, rezoning of his five or six acres of land that he owns on 274th Street. We are in favor of one housing eligibility for that site, not multiple eligibilities. 
uh, Patrick Nord. He's also a neighbor. Um, I was at the hearing last night and spoke in favor of rezoning to rural residential district. At that time, I was under the assumption that Mark could or would only build one single family ho home on the property up for rezoning. I'm aware now that once zoning has changed that Mark or a new owner could build up to five or six homes on the property. And as neighbors, we would have no ability to stop it. I am no longer in favor of rezoning for that reason only. I know Mark's initial plans are for only one new home. He could only build for now and be true to his word, but then if financial needs change, sell to someone else uh, planning more development. Uh, and this next one is from Dana and Mark Capitano. They're also neighbors. Um, we know that Mark and he is a very nice man and very neighborly and would be happy to have him as a neighbor. However, as we understand it, the rezoning of that property potentially allows multiple homes to be built there, each all, all requiring only one acre of land. It's unclear if Mark would eventually be intending on building more homes. However, the property were sold in the future. Uh, someone certainly could do that. We therefore do not support his petition to have the land rezoned. I don't know how much our opinions matters as neighbors, but that is our opinion. That is how we feel. And again, that's Dana and Mark Capitano. <clears throat> well, that's all news to me. I've uh, uh, worked with these folks for years. Uh, there is no intent at this point to uh, put more homes in there. Our goal is to build a house there uh, and be done with it. Uh, if we're allowed to do that, I think there are provisions in the comp plan. If you could put the on this last page, I have. Uh, to consider a limited development in those areas where parcel size and competing land uses have substantially reduced the economic viability and future success of agricultural operations. And also on page 40, it talks about while it should be a policy uh, to limit the planning of new residential subdivisions <clears throat> until multiple uh, municipal services become available, some development may be appropriate in urban expansion areas if steps are taken to ensure that present services are not severely burdened and there will be uh, compatibility with urban land use and services. I think that uh, uh, maintains a continuity of that, uh, uh, that street to um, uh, uh, maintain uh, nice sized acreages uh, in visiting with the city of Harrisburg. Uh, if that gets annexed, it would go in as Ag 2. Uh, Ag 2 is a new um, um, division for them, uh, which allows large acreages and homes. Uh, larger lot sizes, uh, basically, for when such times those those properties are are annexed. Um, I guess a lot of the comments I listened to the planning commission last night. Um, again, uh, everybody seemed to think it makes sense. Uh, you drive along that road; it maintains uh, the uh, harmony of that neighborhood. But um, uh, evidently, I need to visit with my neighbors more because uh, they are, are are assuming I'm going to build multiple lots in there, which I am not. Uh, as I said, that process has to go through replatting. If anything like that happened, uh, there's plenty of opportunity to uh, 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 contest that at that time through the city of Harrisburg platting process. Uh, we have no intent of doing that. I don't know where this rumor came out that I'm going to put in uh, uh, six or eight lots. Uh, so I'll have to visit with those folks. That's all I have. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions for Mark? Mark? I've got a couple questions. Um, the use of the properties to your left and the right of your property, those are both farmsteads, homes? They're all relatively new homes. Um, there is no original farmstead, I don't think, left on that road. They've all been reconstructed. Uh, there was one at one time, uh, but most everything is within the last 20 or 30 years. 30, I'd say 30 years. So the property directly adjacent um, to the west, that's your old That's, that's your our old house, house, yes. Correct. And then there's a property directly adjacent to the east. That's also a house, correct? Yes. And then if I understand this correctly, um, and I've sat through these presentations with Harrisburg, um, that property is all imminently going to be annexed and turned into a residential neighborhood. Yeah, everything north here, um, it sounds like this, This they've already got the sewer into this section. Uh, Michael said this morning, McMahon uh, said that there's, there's plans to try to um, get this annexed and sub, there's actually napkin development plans done on that at this point in time. 
interesting note is Zomer, who lives here, <clears throat> he did some replatting here a few years ago and he signed a, a annexation agreement with uh, um, the city of Harrisburg. Uh, and I know he has uh, desires to do some things, but he is not adjoined here. If you look right here on this map, there's about, I don't know, 100 feet here where his property does not match up to here. So at such time, the property to the north gets annexed, he can be forced to or voluntarily annex. And by then, I could annex too, but that, uh, uh, that, that's in the future. Who knows what's going to hold. I think time is kind of of the essence for us right now in that uh, with the inflation going on and availability of materials, I, I want to get things done as soon as possible. So. You have, and, and just so we're clear here, you're telling us in public on the record you have zero plans to build. <coughs> anything other than just one house for yourself? House and a shop is all we're going to build. Okay. Now it's six acres. Um, when I'm 40 years old, my son owns it. Who's, can something happen there? I'm not going to guarantee that that isn't going to happen. I can't do that. There's no intent. I mean, there's no intent there to do that. Infill happens all the time. As cities get bigger, big lots get smaller. So for me to sit here and guarantee it's going to be that way forever, I can't guarantee that at all. I have no intention of doing that. Did you say you were raising sweet corn on it or we're going yeah. to raise? Yeah, yeah. We raise sweet corn on it. We got about an acre of sweet corn and alfalfa we raise on that. Thank you, Mark. Is Which we're going to need to maintain <clears throat> and continue to do because from what I heard with the adjustments in the, in the ag rates and land rates, it's... <laughs> um, Taxes are going to be on. Taxes are pretty high on that piece of property if you can't do nothing with it. So. Mark, did thank you, you Mark. I, I wouldn't have, Mark, you did you say that the land to the north now is going to be sewered and watered by the city of Harrisburg? Yes, that's my understanding. Do you know when? The plans are in, and according to the developer, they'd like to be installing that line this summer. So that's is that I earmarked know. for residential development then? Yeah. I don't think there's any. I don't remember the zoning map up there. It's it's all um, low density housing, is, I believe, in that area. Yes. Thank you. I'm going to have you uh, have a seat there for a second. Was there anybody here that is um, other than the applicant that would like to speak in favor of the application? All right. If not, um, any commissioners have any other questions for Mr. Blow? Any comments or discussion? Just a comment. I'm trying to figure out. I realize it's our comp plan. But if you, two, two different things. One, as Mark has said, if he was to build a house for he and his spouse, so it's a single family, but that's not to say that the future, after 10, 15, 20 years, whatever God gives you on this earth, that that couldn't be utilized for more housing than what you currently use it for. And that's one of the things that I think. On the other hand, if you have sewer and water coming in and the city of Harrisburg plans to build houses out there, your neighbors will have to accommodate them as well. Correct? I mean, I'm not, I don't know. I'm trying to weigh this thing. So. And if you don't rezone it, then it just sits there as a parcel of property to raise popcorn and sweet corn, right? Or I don't know if you raise popcorn. I, I don't know. So. Any other comments? Toby? Sure. Yep, go ahead, uh, Commissioner Poppin. I just wanted to say that I'd save my comments until the motion's actually made. Thank you. All Manager. right, Commissioner Gibbon. I was just wanted to uh, confirm with Toby. You said was not consistent with our county application plan and failed one to five in planning and zoning. Correct. Thank you. You know, when I look at this, I I do think that'd be a great spot for a single yeah. family home. Um, the problem is, um, if we rezone it to a rural residential, uh, we don't have any control over that. Um, and I can understand neighbors' <clears throat> concerns about there being more than that on that particular piece of property. Um, 
I, I wish all your neighbors would have came in and said they trusted that that was what you were going to do. Apparently that's a, an issue. Uh, so today I'm not going to be able to support it. Um, although I, I see what you're trying to do and I, I don't disagree with you necessarily, but um, I could also see them not wanting more than one uh, residential property there. The number one um, thing in real, real estate coming out of the city is to have five acres of land and a single family. I mean, that's, if you talk to a realtor, they'll all tell you that. They ask questions all the time. We get calls. Do you know where we can buy five acres out in the country so we can build a house and we can have a horse and we can have all this other stuff? So it's an ideal situation for that. But um, Just a question real quick. Um, uh, Toby, if he, if he would apply for a variance, then... Would we have the ability to look at something else? And I'm not saying there'd be support for that, but would that be another option? Uh, no, there's no variance available. I, th I think the option that exists, and I've talked to Harrisburg, is <clears throat> there's development just to the north that's underway currently that hasn't been annexed into the city, um, but will have water and sewer there. I think that annexation will be available within the next two to five years for that property. Again, this isn't necessarily, it's against the comprehensive plan because it's recommended for agricultural, but this also circumvents our density zoning requirements in the county where, you know, each quarter quarter in 1995 was given one building eligibility to rezone this property and give them another building eligibility would circumvent that process. And of course, on a daily basis, our office gets requests to do this every day. Um, to, to enable additional housing on the property. Sure. So that's the primary. Uh, it's a again. slippery slope. Correct. Yeah. <clears throat> Toby, does the uh, city of Harrisburg, so we have, <coughs> because their subdivision authority extends over this property, the city will ultimately decide what is built there and how much is built there, correct? Uh, not land use wise, but, but site improvement wise, <coughs> correct? Right. So the, so the elected officials in the city of Harrisburg will have ultimate authority over whether this man can build one house there or more, correct? Correct. So um, even though we would rezone this, it does not open the doorway for him to just tomorrow go and build five houses there. Uh, correct, but it's taken out of our hands. We would Correct. have no ability to say no to it. And that is the law as it relates to all subdivision authority areas in these growth areas, correct? Correct. Yeah. So that's the issue we have to struggle with is even though we have zoning authority, the city has site approval authority, <coughs> if I understand correctly. That's correct. Yeah. So just the simple act of rezoning will designate it to turn it into what its neighbor, what his neighbors currently do. But the city of Harrisburg gets final say on this. Yes. Okay. If there's no further discussion, I'd consider a motion to approve. Madam Chair. Go ahead. <clears throat> May I please have a clarification for the minutes? Was there a call for opposition besides the letters? Uh, no, not necessarily. We can clarify that. Is there anyone here to, that would like to speak in opposition to the application that didn't submit a letter? Okay, thank you. Thanks for that, Sean. I have a question for Toby. Go ahead. Toby, <clears throat> in other words, eligibility is the big, I mean, besides our comp plan, the eligibility is a big issue as well. Yes. Because we have hold fast on, you know, the forty forty rule, right? We've, we've tried. Yes. Yeah, we try. Yep. <laughs> but on this case, it would be a, a clear violation of what we have set for a long time. The intent. It'd be a violation of your zoning, correct? <clears throat> right. Madam Chair. Yep. Go ahead. Quick comment. I sure. think there have been situations where there's been a isolated, unique piece of property that was left um, 
unusable ag wise not by the you know identified and not uh, acted upon by the previous owner or the current owner I should say um, this property is clear violation of of what we have for the quarter quarter he separated the property isolating it on his own I think this has been a property that was in limbo because of you know nobody's doing or something like that uh, I think it'd be appropriate but this would clearly clearly lead to other individuals wanting to do the same, which would be a very slippery slope for us, unfortunately. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mark. Hi, Madam Chair. I have a question for Mr. Blow. Mr. Sure, Blow, go ahead. when you approached the city of Harrisburg for um, to divide the parcel, did you specifically discuss with them the possibility there would be home construction on the new parcel? Mm, no, not really. That didn't come up at that time. Thank you. That was my intent. Okay. <coughs> With that, I'd consider a motion to approve. I'll make a motion to approve. Thank you. Is there a second? I'll second again. Thank you. Madam Chair, here are my comments. Well, sure, go ahead. Um, uh, we've got a parcel of land, as, as has been noted, that really has no agricultural value at this point. Um, other than maybe to serve as a very small hobby farm for sweet corn and alfalfa, whatnot. Um, you're, he's landlocked. You've got a house to the east. You've got a house to the west. You've got 274th Street, which I can say from personal experience has become a heavily trafficked gravel road. There's 10 acreages on that road, just like what he's proposing and you've got a creek in your backyard to the north. You can't do anything with that parcel of property right now. I mean, you could build a house there and you could continue doing your hobby farm. Other than that, it's a plain piece of land. So I'm asking myself, what's the highest and best use right now? And the highest and best use appears to be doing what your neighbors are doing, which is rural residential. Um, City of Harrisburg, because I've sat through these proposals and or these presentations at the city. Um, I know that there's residential housing coming in there into those lots to the north of you. Um, it'll be there shortly. Um, and so I think this is a highly unique situation where um, because there's 10 other acreages there and because the only uh, <coughs> <clears throat> the only use for that land right now is it's either going to sit empty or this guy could build a house there. I wouldn't support building a housing development there, but I certainly would support him building his single family house on that property. Madam Chair. Go ahead. Um, Commissioner Aarons, I don't disagree that this would turn into a higher use property tax wise turn to a residential uh, the the situation that it creates is a precedent for the other 10 homes there that sit on more than one acre could do a very summer similar thing and I would have a very hard time to say no to that if this board did say yes to this one so again it was not because of somebody else's fault it was by the own property owners own action that this property was um, uh, isolated it was a, a, a part of a larger parcel uh, that had a building eligibility um, and was on, by his own action separated so thank you I think you know and that's what I'm struggling with because if I look you know on the map and I look further to the east I mean there's landowners all along there that would could come to us with the same request um, and some of those people are speaking out against your application today um, So I just I, it's it's not fair across the board for the for the taxpayers who have similar situated properties along that road um, at least in my view although I do agree with you would be a great site for a single family anybody else if not we've got a motion and a second Sean we call the roll Commissioner Aaron. Excuse me. Yes. Uh, 
repeat the uh, get clarification on the motion again? Uh, the motion is to approve. Okay, thank you. Sean, will you call the roll? Commissioner Aarons? Yes. Commissioner Gibbon? No. Commissioner Poppins? No. Commissioner Schmidt? No. Commissioner <coughs> Landine? Unfortunately, no. <clears throat> We're going to move on to item three on our agenda. <clears throat> Good morning. Good morning. Uh, so I have before you today uh, to approve and award a uh, 2022 supply bid for concrete products. Um, so typically what we've done in the past with these, um, again, it's 18 inch. These are all concrete pipe. Um, there's box culverts. There's uh, bridge beams on these, on these bids that we request. So uh, what I would like to do is approve an award to both con uh, vendors. Uh, one is Forterra and the other one is Chemcast. Um, so the reasoning we would award to both is because I can hand pick between each items. I can go down item by item on each one and one might be cheaper on one item than the other. So. You've heard the request, is there a motion? Ma Madam Chair, vote to approve his request. Thank you. Second. <clears throat> Thank you. Madam Chair, quick question. Sure. Could you give us a and the public a uh, estimate on how much uh, percentage wise this has gone up over the uh, over the year? The concrete pipe. Uh, I can get back with you on that. Um, so um, I know last year here. So last year we purchased uh, per lineal foot. Last year we purchased some, uh, I believe it was 54 inch arch from Hancock. Um, I think these are just the rounds. Yeah, forgive me, I didn't, I didn't print off the, the right. arch ones. Sure. But I, but I think we're, I don't know, probably 10% or so, maybe. Um, I can give verification for that. I was just want, curious, just keeping track of how prices are increasing. Thank you. Thank you. We've got a motion and a second. Sean, will you call the roll? Commissioner Aarons? Yes. Commissioner Gibbon? Yes. Commissioner Poppins? Yes. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner Landina? Yes. Move on to item four on our agenda. Uh, next item I have uh, is going to be to uh, approve and authorize the chair to sign a resolution uh, selecting a, cons a consultant for 2022 bridge inspections. Um, you'll have that, uh, the uh, the resolution was before you to uh, choose IMEG to do our bridge inspections for 2022. So moved, Madam Chair. Thank you. Is there a second? I'll second it. Thank you. Sean, will you call the roll? Commissioner Aarons? Yes. Commissioner Gibbon? Yes. Commissioner Poppins? Yes. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner Landy? <clears throat> yes. Item five? Uh, next item I have is uh, I'm going to give you a report um, <clears throat> on uh, modifying our air compressor system out at the highway shop. Um, we have a proposal from Sioux Equipment uh, to do some work out there. Um, it's going to be about almost $15,000. Again, what, what's going to happen is uh, we're going to move. Currently, we have two air compressors in the shop. One is on the mezzanine on the east end or on the west end, and then we have one out in cold storage on the east end of the shop. Um, so. They're not working together, and hence we've had uh, one will run more than the other one. Um, they ju they're just fighting each other on the system. So what they're proposing to do is they're going to take the one off the east end, put it up and mount it up in the mezzanine so they can work side by side together as one unit. So um, I know the, the one that's on the mezzanine, I believe it was last year, we had to rebuild that one already. Um, and, and Sioux Equipment did that. I think it was like 1200 bucks or something uh, to do that already. Um, we've had instances where, where that one on the mezzanine runs almost constantly. So, um, so hopefully this will take care of that issue. Will you need one then on the other end? or No. You no. Won't? They, okay. at, current, well, right now we don't think so, no. This, because uh, currently we have two 7.5 horsepower uh, compressor units. Uh, they're just separated. 
and right now they're not working together. Uh, the system is all tied in, all the piping is tied in on one system, and we have regulators, you know, and they're fighting each other who's, who's supplying air and who's not. So the one out in cold storage probably doesn't have a whole lot of hours on it, um, just because the one on the west end is the one that runs all the time. So. All right. I've heard the request. But, well. It's, yep. uh, no, no action is needed. Okay. I'm just letting you know that, that we need to, to expend this, this money to, to fix the problem. And again, it's for moving it. It's for uh, repiping, uh, doing some plumbing, piping on the, the airlines, uh, and then electrical work that has to be done too. So. And you said it was about $1,200? No, it's going to be 15, about 15000 15000 Okay. Yeah. I misheard. <laughs> so. And this was a design flaw, correct? I don't know if anybody wants to go in and say that. Um, I'm saying I, 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 you could maybe say that yes, but uh, again, I, I'm not an expert on it. Uh, again, speaking with the way, equipment, the way it was designed is not working. The way it I, was designed is not working. I say that so, is a design flaw. Thank you. So how much is a new air compressor? So initially we were uh, looking at getting uh, a new one. It was a screw screw system and we're looking just for the air compressor. It was about. I think it was about seventeen, sixteen thousand just for the compressor. Um, and again, that's uh, I think that was a fifteen horse, I believe. But um, then they brought in their their expert on air compressors, and he's like, "Well, the, your problem is this: we've had it to other shops where they've had them separated." He said, and "They need to work together, not working against each other." So, would they be more efficient, lawyer or Jerry, if you had one big air compressor? as opposed to two? Well, that was the road we were going down initially. And like I said, we had looked at a, a screw compressor. Yeah. Um, and again, that thing, uh, like I said, I think we were about 16 or so thousand just for the compressor. That's not installation on that. Um, but again, you know, the, the type that we have is not, it's a reciprocating, I believe. And um, the screw probably isn't, wouldn't be um, the most, um, probably the most advantageous use Okay. Uh, for what we need it for. Um, so, like I said, uh, I think this will be the cheaper option because I think going the other way, we're probably looking, probably with installation and everything, we're probably looking at close to 30, I bet. Hmm. But, all right, thank you. So, no, thank all right. You. Thanks, Terry. Move on to item six on our agenda. Julia, good morning. Good morning. And Commissioner Schmidt, I think this is your item. Would you like to do the honors or would I you like me to? I will just tell you that Scott Green uh, lives in my district, a fine young man that brings quite a set of credentials uh, to the uh, Planning and Zoning Board, which expressed an interest. I interviewed him, and he has uh, all the desires to uh, be a participant in the future growth of the county. And Julia, you have vetted him and done the background checks and interviewed him. and. He's good to go. He's ready to go. So I would uh, I would move that to accept Scott Green from District 5 as a new member of the Planning and Zoning Board for Lincoln County. Thank you for that. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Any discussion? Julia, this position was advertised, correct? Uh, no, I don't believe so. No, when if you could recall, every commissioner gets to appoint someone from their district. Yeah, and we advertised for the uh, person from Commissioner Gibbons' district a few months ago, right? I don't believe so. I, I, don't, I don't believe I did. So. No. Did, did the auditor's office? I don't Some, know that we've ever advertised necessarily. I we, if I recall correctly, we okay. did advertise on ruling. Yep, some time ago, um, Human Resources Director and the auditor's office and Mr. Brown put together a proposal for a certain like methodology of this type of recruitment. Um, when it was presented to the board, it was decided not to approve that methodology and instead take it case by case per the commissioner of that designated district, correct? Correct. Thank you for that. Yes, yes. you're welcome. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I've heard the request. We have motions pending. Uh, Sean, we call the roll, please. Commissioner Aarons? Yes. Commissioner Gibbon? Yes. Commissioner Poppins? Yes. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner Landine? Yes. Thank Motion you. carries. Move on to item seven on our agenda. 
The request that I'm asking is to approve the notice to airport consultants requesting statements of qualifications for quality assurance acceptance sampling and testing for subsurface geotechnical exploration acceptance for uh, AIP 3460078020022, which is the current AIP grant for the Marv Ski Lincoln County Airport. Uh, this is not different than what was originally proposed in that grant layout. Um, it would be sent out by Helms and Associates. The coring sampling would be anticipated to occur this spring, and they would do the testing for the north and south sections of the apron in preparation for the needed apron reconstruction project. Uh, the expense is covered under the already accepted and executed grant agreement um, that I previously mentioned. Also, I heard from Brooke this morning that the state has chosen to increase their um, <coughs> contribution for this grant. So instead of a six and a half percent match that we would do, we would have to do a five. Thank you. Anybody have any questions about that? If not, I consider a motion. I'll move to approve the notice. Thank you. I'll second it. Thank you. Any further discussion? If not, Sean, will you call the roll? Commissioner Aarons? Yes. Commissioner Gibbon? Yes. Commissioner Poppins? Yes. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner Landine? Yes. <clears throat> Item 8 on our agenda? <clears throat> Good morning, Sherry. Good morning. Um, the first thing that I've got is to approve a transfer of the expenditures related to the Rural Access Infrastructure Fund from 295-4311-422-2000 um, in the amount of $4,824.64 to the following funds, 201-4311-4112-000 in the amount of $4,199.64 and 201-4311-429200 in the amount of 625 this Thank is, you. Yep, go ahead. So we know that this is part of the rural infrastructure funds. We received the $52,328.81. Um, this will complete the inventory of the township infrastructures, and the remaining balance will be left in the fund to help with the replacement of them. Anybody have any questions for staff? Do you motion? Yes. Motion to approve the transfer of funds to the Rural Access Infrastructure Fund. Thank you. Anybody else? Second. All right. Thank you for the second. Sean, we call the roll, please. Commissioner Aarons? Yes. Commissioner Gibbon? Yes. Commissioner Poppins? Yes. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner Landine? Yes. Sherry, last item, number nine. Okay. So I'm trying to pull up the election calendar. Um, we are getting ready to get into election calendar season, our election season, um, starting with absentee voting will be starting in April. Let me find my calendar before I start going off the numbers. All right, so I have listed on the website, it will be all the important dates regarding to the election um, from the nomination petitions being due to the canvassing in November and the last day for the recount petition. So that information is available for anybody to view. Um, I've also placed an ad for a temporary election worker, two of them, for my office as budgeted for last year um, to assist with the election process. And that will be closing on March 4th. Oops, that's where I already was. So that's closing on March 4th for those. I think I've got one applicant so far. So if you know anybody that would like to be part of the election process, let them know that the application is on the website. Then with all the conversations that we've had lately regarding the elections, I just kind of wanted to go over some things um, with that Lincoln County does and does not do. So the voter registration forms, that's the beginning of the process for the election. Obviously, you have to be registered to vote to do any kind of elections. Um, the deadline for the voter registration is 15 days prior to any election. Um, in the absentee process, we will not mail out a ballot unless we have received an application. There has never been a case in the 10 years that I've been here where somebody got a ballot randomly by not having an application first. 
We did receive a lot of calls during the general election because the people did fill out an absentee ballot. When they check all, it gives them all the ballots we were able to prove to them that they did check all. So that's why they were getting a ballot in November that they didn't think that they signed up for, but they did. Um, when we get the absentee ballots back, every envelope is checked against the absentee application that we receive, every one. Last year, I think we took out 10 ballots that were either, we could not verify the signature. When we do that, we send the applicant a letter stating we can't approve your application because your signature doesn't match. We had most of them come in and they looked and they're like, yeah, that's not the way I sign. But they did submit the application, they did submit the ballot. So they showed us their driver's license, we had them re-sign the ballot and initial that it was them. Um, if they don't match, if they come in as unsigned or anything else, we do remedy that they're that we were not taking away that person's ability to vote because they may have forgotten to sign the ballot. Um, I do have the absentee process here. So we receive the application, verify the application is complete, enter the application into total vote, mail applicant their ballot, receive return absentee ballot ballot envelope from the voter, scan the absentee ballot envelope as received, compare the signature of the application and the signature on the ballot. If, we reject, if rejected, we enter the reason on total vote and mail the applicant a letter. Um, authorized messengers are something that is able to use. We had several people in 2020, as you can imagine, that were confined to their house due to um, quarantines or they were in the hospital or whatnot. They are able to have somebody of their choosing come and get a ballot picked up for them. They have to sign the bottom of the application saying that they're an authorized messenger the applicant has to sign the bottom of the application saying that they've requested this person to do this. So we don't just randomly send them out with anybody that comes in. The same matching process with their signatures as you do with a regular yep. application? Yep, when we receive the ballot back, yep, we will check that we receive it. They fill out the top of the absentee <laughs> application like they do on the other one. The only, problem, the only difference is, is on the bottom it says whether there's an authorized messenger or not. Um, so we've heard a lot of talk about the Center for Tech and Civic Life grant that you approved us to apply for. Um, the money went into paying the uh, poll work or the precinct workers an extra $45. It paid for the temporary election workers that worked in the office of 95. Um, we were going to do a drop box, but after discussion, we did not find a secure enough location to put a drop box. So we did not choose to. The Dropbox that we did receive, the one that sits in front of the courthouse, was used with Have a Cares money. Now, what you might want to remember is there was a lot of media saying, do not put your ballot in the mail. And there was a lot of people that weren't able to come into the courthouse. So what is the option? We put a Dropbox outside so that these people that were not comfortable mailing their ballots in and could not come into the courthouse because we were by appointment only, we had a means for them to get their ballot in to be able to count. Um, the drop box is outside the courthouse with 24 seven security. Um, during absentee voting, we can talk to 911 and see if they can watch the cameras closer. Uh, with the auditor, we check that box every night and every morning. Um, so right now, the you know where the ballot drop box is. We're gonna talk to the sheriff and see if we can't move it inside the sheriff's doors put an extra camera on it, and keep the film for 22 months, the same time that we would keep the election information. The only reason it wasn't put in there in the first place is we didn't have handicap ability. We now have the push button out there, so we'll be able to, so a handicap would be able to use it. Um, and then that's the future. Right now the, ballot, the film is kept for six months. So by moving it in there, I've talked to Jake. Um, I haven't talked to the sheriff about opening the doors, but hopefully he's receptive to that. Um, but when we move it down there, we'll have a specific camera for it and the, the film will stay in there for 22 months. We did have a deputy drop off in Sioux Falls and that was also due to extreme outcry from the city of Sioux Falls residents that did not want to drive all the way to Canton to drop off their ballot. So to come up with a solution, um, having an armed sheriff up there was probably a good idea because 
we would send them up there with a secured lockbox. At five o'clock, I'd go up there and sit with them so that there would be two people there. This year, if I do that, I'll probably have somebody go up there the whole time. In hindsight, it might be better to have two people up there rather than just one. Um, but I do plan on continuing it. Uh, we had a really good turnout on that, and we've also had a lot of response from the citizens of Sioux Falls and Harrisburg that didn't want to drive down here. They were very appreciative that we <coughs> offered that service for them. Um, this is a, the election equipment that is used, the D, DS850. And this slide comes from a lot of um, remarks that I've heard. That's why I'm going over this now, is just to make sure that you know what we're coming from. Um, the election equipment is hardened. And what that means is it cannot connect to the internet. In order for our counters to connect to the internet, you would either have to put a thumb drive in there or have a hard cord going to it. We check both of those, it does not happen. Um, we, if we were to, the comment's been made to use hand counting um, in the 2020 election, and I think we had 15,000 absentees alone. And there was how many questions on the ballot? So if you want to hand count those, I think that you're going to have human error and you will not get your results in the same night ever. We, I've, and since I've been here 10 years, I've been through two recount procedures. The only thing that they found in error in the recount procedure was not how the machines counted, not how any of the equipment worked. The major part of the recount where there was problems was when an uh, election worker didn't stamp the ballot or an election worker gave the wrong ballot for the precinct they were in. But there was never a problem with the machines counting them. We do do a mock election um, where the public is able to come in and watch. We do at least two of these and that verifies that the software that we've got on the machine runs through the machine and it counts it correctly. If it does not, we send the um, software back. We can't move on until we have a clean election run. Um, we also do public testing. We have to do a public test 10 days prior to the election. After this public test, that room will be locked down. We have uh, locks that we can put on to make sure that nobody is tampering with the machines. Um, and then election night, in the, on election night, the public is welcome to come in and watch our process. They, they can see, and I beg anybody that has any questions regarding the election process to volunteer to be part of the election process, come and work in my office or come and watch the night of the election. Um, I've had comments from the commissioners before saying that we run a very clean election and very, there's no problems, very little problems with our elections. So I think that we do a high standard in Lincoln County as far as the election process. Any questions? <clears throat> no, Sherry. thank you for that though. Uh, Sherry, I think we could, we could serve as a role model, seriously. I don't think that there is any way that you could have fraud, fraudulent, fraudulent uh, voting and things like that. The one comment I would made is that across the country, there is a group or there has been many of these charges that we have had uh, casting some doubt on our voting process. And it just isn't isolated to Lincoln County or South Dakota. This is pretty well across the country that you hear the very same thing that we heard here on election, multiple voting, drop boxes, et cetera. So I think. Well, and I went to uh, I went to a seminar this weekend on Saturday. Um, they did make some valid points. There were some things in there that you know you could think about, but there are some points that you know, like the Dropbox and the the machines and that that you know. I just have to defend them on that, I guess. Okay. Thank you for that, Thank Jerry. You. Anybody else have any questions? All right, if not, i um, just like to mention a couple of things before we adjourn. Uh, tonight is our joint meeting at Carnegie Town Hall in Sioux Falls. That starts at 7 p.m. And also on March 1st of 2022, we will have our drainage board hearings.
So I just wanted everybody to be aware of that. Uh, with that, I'd consider a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? I'll second it. Thank you. Sean, may you call the roll? Commissioner Aarons? Yes. Commissioner Gibbon? Yes. Commissioner Poppins? Yes. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner Landine? Yes. Thanks, everyone. Have a good week.